In this module, we'll be talking about the relative measures of dispersion. So these measures of dispersion, as we talk about as divided into two types, we are absolute measures of dispersion and relative measures of dispersion. We already know that all these absolute measures of dispersion have their corresponding relative measures of dispersion. For range, there is this coefficient of range. For quartile deviation, there is coefficient of quartile deviation. For mean absolute deviation or mean deviation, there is coefficient of mean deviation. And for standard deviation, there is coefficient of variation. All these coefficient of this coefficients of dispersion, they give their answers in, the, in, in terms of the percentages. They do not include any units of the observations. Whereas absolute measures of dispersions do report the units of the measurement. Let's talk about the coefficient of range. Coefficient of range is actually the ratio of the measure of dispersion, that is range, divided by the mean of the minimum and maximum value divided by 2. So this turned out to be xm minus x0 divided by xm plus x0 multiplied by 100. In our data for GRF measurements, the coefficient of range is 50.17 because we know that the maximum observation is 44 in our data and the minimum observation is 14.6. If you take the difference and in the, in the denominator, we take the, we take the sum of both the values, it turned out to be 29.4 and for addition, it is 58.6. And this always is reported in terms of percentages. So there is 50.17% variation among this data. The other type of relative measure of dispersion is coefficient of quartile deviation, which is also a variation of the quartile deviation, which is actually calculated as Q3 minus Q1 divided by the whole thing divided by 2 and Q3 plus Q1 by 2. This thing if you cross multiply it and it cancels out and this simplifies to this formula where Q1 and Q3 are measured using usual methods we discussed earlier. In this data of GRF measurement, we already know that Q3 is 33.525 and Q1 is 27.25. We find quartile deviation out of it, which is 3.138 newtons. Coefficient of quartile deviation will be the difference and the addition in the numerator as well as denominator and the value turned out to be 10.32 percent variation. The third measure of relative measure of dispersion is coefficient of mean absolute deviation from arithmetic mean and that could be done for the median as well if we consider median right there. So in an example where we studied the 10 can breast cancer patients were followed and their survival times were noted down, which were from 2 to 8. The first, we calculated mean deviation. It turned out to be 1.9. And the coefficient of mean absolute deviation is mean absolute deviation divided by the arithmetic mean, which is 100 uh, multiplied by 100, which turned out to be 38%. The last relative measure of dispersion is coefficient of variation. It uses the standard deviation. The standard deviation is use, useful as a measure of variation within a given set of data. But if we need to compare two different data sets, it's not quite helpful. Rather, it gives some misleading comparisons. Therefore, when we are comparing two or more than two data sets, we do not prefer the standard deviation, but we try to work with the coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation is a ratio of the standard deviation with arithmetic mean multiplied by 100. In two data sets, when we get the age 25 years for group one and age 11 years for group two, mean weight is 145 pounds and 80 pounds with the, with the standard deviations 10 pounds and 10 pounds in each group. If you look at this data, both the samples have the same standard deviation, but their mean weights are different. If we want to compare these two data sets, we will rather go with the coefficient of variation. If we calculate the coefficient of variation for the first group, it turned out to be 6.9%. And for the second group, it turned out to be 12.5%. So if we compare these results, we get a quite different impression.
It is clear from this example that variation is much higher in the sample of 11-year-olds, which is sample 2, than in the sample of 25 years old, which is sample 1. There are few properties of coefficient of variation that it is a very useful measure when we are comparing more, more than one data sets, and especially when the results obtained are from different persons who are condu conducting investigation involving the same variable. Since the coefficient of variation is independent of scale of measurement, it is useful statistics for comparing the variability of two or more variables even with different units or measured on a different scales. For example, using the coefficient of variation to compare the variability in weights of one sample of subject whose weights are expressed in pounds with the variability in the weights of other sample of subject whose weights are expressed in kilograms. Coefficient of variation is much more reliable estimate in such situations when two different data sets are measured on a different units. All these different measures of dispersion have their appropriate usage for nominal data that is qualitative data we prefer range only when the data is qualitative but measured on an ordinal scale we prefer either a range or interquartile range or if our data is ordered already it, it all depends upon the research objectives though if for the quantitative variable if our data is measured on either ratio or interval scale we firstly look at the shape of the distribution if the shape of the distribution is skewed we prefer calculating mean deviation, but this mean, devi mean absolute deviation should be calculated using median. And then we also prefer interquartile range. If the data is symmetric, we can use interquartile range, we can use mean deviation from mean and standard deviation. Generally, standard deviation is, is more commonly used for the symmetric data sets. When reporting these measures of dispersion, we tend to report them along with the measures of central tendency. If the data is symmetric, we report arithmetic mean along with the standard deviation. But if our data is skewed, irrespective, it is positively skewed or negatively skewed, we prefer reporting interquartile range along with the median. Thank you.